Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming for this session. We will start the session, the panel, very soon. Thank you. I would like to invite people from the back to join us in the front. And maybe we can start the meeting. As you know, the remote participation is uh, experiencing some difficulties. Uh, we, we would have a speaker, a panelist from uh, uh, UNCTA to join us. Uh, if it doesn't work, I will read a statement on behalf. So thank you very much again um, for coming. This is the process-related meeting uh, towards the VISIS Forum 2019. It's the first physical meeting after its launch in July uh, this summer. And uh, we will go through uh, some of the already uh, announced um, uh, partnerships, also uh, talk about the open calls, invite the communities to contribute and take them through. Uh, it's a great pleasure for us to uh, have uh, today, uh, Ms. Sasha Rubel from UNESCO, also uh, Mr. Denise uh, Susar from UNDESA, uh, and we would like to invite them to uh, give some opening remarks. Uh, Sasha, please. Thank you very much. Colleagues from UNCTAD and UNDESA and the ITU, thank you for being here despite your plenipotentiary happening at the same time, very far away from here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of UNESCO, I'm pleased to greet you and to welcome you as one of the co-organizers of the WISIS Forum in the framework of this open forum, Implementation of World Summit on the Information Society, Action Lines for Sustainable Development Goals. It's widely recognized that the theme of this year's WISIS Forum, Information and Communication Technologies for Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, is at the heart of UNESCO's mandate and endeavor. UNESCO is the UN agency with a mandate to uphold freedom of expression and promote the free flow of ideas by word and image. UNESCO works to increase inclusive knowledge societies and empower local communities by increasing access to and preservation and sharing of information and knowledge in all of UNESCO's domains of competence. And I'd like to recognize several of my colleagues in the room that are working very actively on this, including Jaco Dutois, who is the coordinator of our Information for All program, as well as Guillerme, who is responsible for the CI program in Montevideo. So you can see we are in force in our intergovernmental programs and also via our presence in the field, coordinated by our chief of the executive office, Cedric Wackholz, working to put uh, into place follow-up to all of our work in the framework of WISIS. Ladies and gentlemen, our vision of universal knowledge societies relies upon a free and open use of new technologies that can foster capabilities to access as well as contribute to global knowledge pools. Access to information and knowledge now carries a much wider connotation and includes access to the internet, access to other di digital technologies, and the ability to create an enabling environment to seek and receive knowledge online. It also includes strategies to produce digital content and innovative technologies that can enhance skills, particularly of youth and women. And in this regard, later on in this open forum, I look forward to talking about the work we'll be doing jointly with other UN agencies in the hackathon foreseen as a lead up to the WISIS Forum in 2019. As you know, UNESCO continues to serve as the facilitator for six of the WISIS action lines on access to information and knowledge, e-learning, e-science, cultural diversity and identity, linguistic diversity and local content, media, and ethical dimensions of the information society. 
In this regard, we're working through internet universality frameworks to support the internet as a rights-based, open, accessible, and multi-stakeholder driven tool, also known as the Rome Principles. We have developed tools to assess internet policies and how they are enhancing democracy and building knowledge societies to build and ensure sustainable development. And in this regard, we have developed internet universality indicators along these principles. In this regard, I'd like to invite you to our open forum that will be occurring tomorrow on measuring a free, open, rights-based and inclusive internet. It will happen tomorrow, Tuesday, from 4.10 to 5.10 in room 10. And I invite all of those interested to attend, not only because of the interesting subject, but our room 10 is the traditional room of the executive board and uh, one of the most monumental rooms in our headquarters. Uh, dear colleagues, as I mentioned uh, this year in the WISIS Forum 2019, we will be coordinating the WISIS Hackathon around the theme Hacking Solutions for Lifelong Learning and Livelihoods prior to the WISIS Forum in Geneva. Uh, we will be doing this in partnership with the ITU, but also in partnership uh, with the private sector and other UN agencies. And we look forward to placing an emphasis on the role that digital skills and digital entrepreneurship play in ensuring ICTs play their full role in sustainable uh, development. In addition uh, to this hackathon, we will be proposing three high-level panels dedicated to questions related to accessibility, cultural heritage, and artificial intelligence, and indigenous languages. As many of you know, 2019 is the International Year of Indigenous Languages based on a recommendation by the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. UNESCO is working very actively in this regard to make sure that indigenous languages are preserved also in the online environment. And in this regard, we look forward to working with other UN agencies and partners in the public and private sector to make sure that indigenous languages are both preserved and promoted in cyberspace. In closing, I'd like to underline that in taking the combined uh, WISIS SDG operational framework forward that we are working on with the ITU, UNESCO's position is clear. Universal access to information and knowledge and freedom of expression are the foundations for inclusive and sustainable development. In empowering every woman and man, they are fundamentally forces for dialogue, mutual understanding, and lasting peace. I take this opportunity to thank everyone in this room for your continued cooperation, uh, UNESCO colleagues, UN colleagues, and colleagues from uh, civil society in the public and private sector. And I look forward on behalf of UNESCO uh, continuing to work with you to implement our commitments in the framework of WISIS and to building knowledge societies around the world jointly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sasha. It's been a great pleasure to be working with UNESCO and other co-organizers of the WISIS process also with our other colleagues from the UN agencies as lead facilitators and other uh, contributors. Um, I would like to see now whether uh, we have the colleague from uh, UNCTAD present uh, remotely. If not, maybe we can have Torbjorn joining us later. Uh, They have shared with me their statement to read on behalf. It will be my pleasure. On behalf of the Mr. Torbjorn Fredriksson, Chief of the ICT Policy Section, Div Division of the Technology and Logistics of uh, UNCTAD, um, this is the following statement. UNCTAD is proud to be a co-organizer of the VISIS Forum 2019. As many of you know, we have been involved in this for many years and have found the process a valuable sounding board for our work in the digital economy and an excellent opportunity to engage with stakeholders beyond our traditional intergovernmental framework. Thank you to ITU and UNESCO for organizing this first physical meeting on the open consultation process. UNCTAD mostly wants to encourage all those stakeholders participating today, both on-site and remotely, to start preparing for their impactful contributions to the VISIS Forum 2019. April is not far away. Views from multiple stakeholders are the strength of the VISIS Forum. We are here to listen to you, and particularly in our case, to hear your inputs on the economic and trade aspects of the Information Society and the ICT for Development. UNCTAD is not the only co-organizer 
of the VESIS Forum, but also a co-facilitator of the Action Line C7 on e-business, along with the International Trade Center and the Universal Postal Union. UNCTAD contributes to this action line through its work to help developing countries join the digital economy and get the maximum benefits of e-commerce. For developing countries to develop an enabling environment for e-commerce, they must look at the number of policy areas, including ICT infrastructure and services, awareness raising and skills development, the legal and regulatory framework, electronic payments, trade logistics and financing for e-commerce. We would like to invite VISI stakeholders in any of these areas to contribute to e-commerce for development through the UNCTAD e-commerce week. Like the VISI's forum, the UNCTAD e-commerce week is an open to all kinds of stakeholders. There is a first regional e-commerce week next month. The Africa e-commerce week is taking place in Nairobi from 10 to 14 December 2018. And you can register online by going to our dedicated website. Just Google UNCTAD Africa e-commerce week to find it. Under the theme Empowering African Economies in the Digital Era, the Africa e-commerce week will examine ways to enhance the ability of African countries to engage, to engage in and benefit from e-commerce and the evolving digital economy. There will also be the fifth global e-commerce week in Geneva from 1st to 5th of April 2019, back to back with the VISIS Forum, as you will notice, this is week preceding the VISIS Forum 2019, and we hope that you will be able to join us. The theme of the week will in 2019 be from digitalization to development. Please save the date and registration for that event will open early next year. Thank you very much for your time in attending this meeting, and we look forward to a rich exchange with you in the coming months. Thank you again to uh, our co-organizers. Um, we should also mention the, um, our colleagues from UNDP who could not be present with here uh, with us today. We are very happy that um, so far um, the VISIS uh, forum has been evolving uh, with the support of uh, many stakeholders uh, coming to the VISIS forum. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing the work uh, with all of you. Uh, maybe I can now share some uh, practical and more detailed information about the upcoming VESIS Forum 2019. And later I will invite the leading facilitator uh, on behalf of UNDESA, Mr. De Susar, to uh, address the floor. And we also have with us today uh, VESIS Prize winner in 2019 from ISOC, Joyce. Uh, Denise, maybe I can uh, come to sit in your place. It will be easier to control the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the upcoming VISIS Forum takes place on 8 to 12 of April 2019. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, the topic and the theme of this VISIS Forum is information and communication technologies for achieving the sustainable development goals. I will share with you, and you have this uh, presentation online already, so I will just quickly go to what will VISIS Forum showcase this year, uh, as we are already doing, doing it um, for many years, and some of the new uh, formats we hope to uh, receive by the contributions from the community. Uh, we have this VISIS Forum to showcase the advancements of the frontier technologies for social development and change, Technologies such as drones for social good, the human face of artificial intelligence, the world of the rapidly growing cryptocurrencies and other blockchain technologies for development, uh, 3D design, design for thinking and 3D printing and so on will be showcased at the VISIS Forum based on the contributions that we have received so far through the OCP process and also during the VISIS Forum 2018. The KPIs for the upcoming forum are following the trend from the past. We are looking into having more than 2,500 participants uh, from 150 countries with more than 100 uh, high-level uh, representatives uh, from the governments and the private sector, civil society, academia, and others. 
We are also looking to have more than 150 workshops and sessions. We will be lucky, happy to and pleased to announce and host the VCS Prize ceremonies with 18 VCS winners and 72 VCS champions. The VCS Forum exhibition will also take place with more than 25 stands that are free of charge, as you all know, and uh, we do hope to have the balanced multi-stakeholder participation. The VCS outcomes that are programmed for the, for the 2019 Forum are um, reflecting um, from the outcome document, uh, the high-level track, also the VCS action line supporting implementation of the SDGs, VCS talk-taking report, uh, the, continu the continuation of the VCS for 2018 and SDG matrix, plus the VCS talk-taking success stories. It is a great pleasure to also remind you that the first VCS annual forum took place in 2009. Since its establishment in 2005, 2003 and 2005, uh, this process implementation of the VCS action lines were taken individually by the UN agencies within their working groups uh, related to the VCS forum. And in 2009, we have uh, announced and established the first annual forum that will bring all of you together in Geneva to discuss how are the VCS action lines implemented. Next year, we will be celebrating the 10th anniversary since the first establishment and uh, there will be some special events dedicated to this um, amazing anniversary. Another announcement to look uh, forward to uh, is the Accessibility Day at the VCS Forum or the special events that we are exploring to have together with our community. And I also invite you to um, contribute to this, um, to this day. I will now go to the reminder of the open calls. As you know, VCS Forum is um, crowdsourced. The content and uh, the format of the forum is crowdsourced. We are reaching out to the community in uh, asking you for the, your proposals and suggestions on what would be the next topic, the next session, the, who would, should be the speakers. And I please uh, invite you to um, follow this uh, through online submission forms and through uh, the next uh, physical meeting uh, and so on. Also, the high level track on the 9th and 10th of April at the VCS Forum. Uh, the speaker requests for the ministers, CEOs, and head of organizations will be available soon. Um, finally, the deadline for this open consultation process is the 10th of February 2019. We also have the call for the high level track uh, facilitators with the same deadline and the photo contest, um, something that we have started uh, three years ago and so far has proved to be a, quite a successful uh, exercise. As you many know, uh, sometimes looking for a particular photo that will um, explain um, the ICT for development projects is not so easy to find when you're making your presentations or you're trying to enrich your websites. And this was the idea where we started actually to call for these photos from around uh, the world, from the ground. And we have received so far many uh, amazing photos. I invite you to check the VSIS photo contest 2017 and 2018 results. Versus prizes deadline is this month, at the end of this month, and I will talk more about it later. As I mentioned, these are the five phases of the VCS Open Consultation, VCS Forum Open Consultation process. The launch took place on the 2nd of July. Today we're having the first physical meeting, and the next physical meeting is scheduled sometime in January and February. We will soon be announcing the dates. Final deadline for submissions, again, is the 10th of February, 2019, and the final brief will be on March 8, 2019. As I mentioned, all the submissions uh, are to be taken electronically. I do invite you to share this information with your communities and your networks. It is very important that we receive as many contributions and many proposals through the OCP process uh, and um, shape the format for the next year following the submissions. The VCS talk taking process, uh, one of the integral parts since 2004 of the VCS uh, process in general, uh, is calling again for the VCS talk taking report 2019. The deadline is um, end of the month uh, together with the VCS prizes. And what we are looking into uh, related to the VCS stock taking process is to collect as many as possible good ICT practices that, is, that are helping the development and also advancing sustainable development goals. This is forum, as you know, uh, since 2015 when it um, had the final review and the uh, in New York by the United Nations General Assembly, aligned together with the Sustainable Development Goals 
and is linking all these processes with this important global agenda. The same as this is forum and this is process, this is talk taking is aligning itself with the sustainable development goals, trying to see how our particular projects on the ground helping advance a particular sustainable development goal or its targets. The, for, the, the report itself will be published during the VSIS forum next year. And you should all, all know and you should be all uh, proud that the VSIS stock taking database currently uh, con, uh, has more than 10,000 entries uh, and has a growing community of more than 350,000 stakeholders that uh, were submitting and contributing to the VSIS stock taking process since, since 2004. Since 2012, we, the, one of the integral parts of the VSIS uh, stock taking was, was the VSIS prizes contest. And since 2010, we have been launching the, we have launched the VSIS stock taking online platform and all the submissions are to be taken electronically. One of the most globally recognized contests awarding best RCT practices for sustainable development goals is the VSIS prize contest. It was established in 2012. And we're looking forward to the eighth edition of this, um, uh, of this contest. And uh, maybe uh, you should all know that uh, we've been growing uh, rapidly since, 2000, uh, since its beginning. And in 2015, when we reached the magic number of 300 submissions, last year we had 492. Uh, it is, has, it, the increase itself, we're looking to uh, have uh, submissions, uh, more than 500 uh, in 2019, and we would like to invite all of you to share this amazing opportunity to promote ICT projects around the world, especially those under the radar of the greater efforts on helping development. All the calls are to be submitted online, and um, I do have, uh, this, is, this is has an ITU, has a, a booth here uh, at the IGF, number 36, so please, uh, 37, so please come and I'll tell you, share more information on how you should be promoting this process within your communities and networks and further on which of the phases to follow, especially the online voting phase that will take place at the end of the year. The open call for the VSIS Forum 2019 High Level Track Facilitators is also very important. As you know, we, um, um, during the high-level segment, we are looking forward to uh, having the high-level dialogues and the moderators coming from uh, different sectors, as you know, government, private sector, civil society, academia, are all invited to present their representatives in order to best moderate and shape these high-level dialogues for the purpose of development. In addition to this, as I mentioned, this forum took place first for the first time in 2017, and now we have the new call to, for the 2019, depicting how ICTs are, capable, are enabling sustainable development goals and generally the development. The, the, photo, the photos will be collected on 10, 10th of November, February 2019, and the call also is to be, uh, and the submissions are to be uh, submitted electronically. You please find all the information at the VSIS Forum 2019 website. This is the slide on the VSIS Forum building blocks, things that are happening during the VSIS Forum in the past and things that we are pro most will have uh, in the 2019 with the different um, uh, innovations, of course. I invite you to uh, explore all of them and see how are we um, addressing uh, different issues within the different shaped format. Some of the innovations that we started and some of the uh, new uh, uh, tracks that we included in the 2000, in the VSIS forum in the past, and that we are looking forward to see also in the 2019, would be the virtual reality for sustainable development goals. Also, we are working together with the, with the locally uh, licensed TED Talks, TEDx Geneva, who are also bringing together their communities and inspirational speak, uh, uh, speeches during the VSIS forum. Also, we started the hackathon uh, in 2017, our first um, hackathon was on the, uh, coding for e-health. This year we had coding for Hack Against Hunger. And next uh, year we're looking uh, together with our colleagues from UNESCO to organize hackathon uh, on e-learning. Something that uh, I would like to, to hear more from um, uh, our colleague Sasha from UNESCO. Youth engagement is something that we started last year in 2000, uh, actually this year in 2018 as the last edition of the VSIS Forum. And we're looking forward to have this track strengthened in the future. 
uh, together with bringing the vloggers and YouTubers to the VSIS Forum, uh, organizing special events for them uh, where they can feel empowered uh, and we can, we can hear their um, um, suggestions, challenges and opportunities uh, for the young generations. And that we were also looking into uh, uh, hearing from them something that uh, would benefit the youth around the world related to the use of ICTs for development. And now we are back to the slide on the 2019 hackathon, Coding for E-Learning. Uh, please see the information on the slide and Sasha, maybe you'd like to share some more information about this. Sure, thank you, Vladimir. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening uh, remarks, the theme of this year's hackathon will be uh, hacking solutions for lifelong learning and livelihoods. This builds on a lot of the work that UNESCO is doing to encourage digital skills and digital entrepreneurship, notably in the framework of our work of the Youth Mobile Initiative and our Searching for Martha initiative, part of this framework, which looks at encouraging uh, young uh, girls and women uh, to develop digital skills to produce local solutions for local challenges related to sustainable development. Um, at UNESCO, we promote uh, uh, open solutions and free and open source software. And one of the things that we are looking at is how to use open solutions to develop uh, locally targeted uh, solutions for uh, issues uh, ranging from maternal health to access to educational textbooks, uh, to uh, peace building, uh, to uh, issues related to uh, mother tongue and languages in, across the African continent. And one of the things that we will be doing will be building on our experience with Youth Mobile, as well as our experience promoting media and information literacy uh, in partnership with our education sector, who is developing guidelines related to digital skills, uh, digital policy frameworks, and digital entrepreneurship. This hackathon will be uh, building on hackathons that we have foreseen across uh, uh, particularly the African continent, but also globally in partnership with our private sector uh, partners, which include uh, SAP, uh, looking at how to bring together the public and private sector uh, to develop local digital solutions uh, to issues related to lifelong learning and livelihoods. So we look forward to working jointly with our UN partners as well as with the private sector and some of our beneficiaries on the ground to making this a success. I will open the floor for questions after the presentations. We Thank have you. Renata. Sorry, so I like jump in with a comment uh, during your presentation, but uh, really interesting and exciting because um, the most difficult thing in hackathons is to get a, a good number of participation of women. And uh, we have a human rights, gender and youth main session tomorrow at 4.30, which will be a town hall format. Everyone can present and invite a project. So I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, come and share the invitation. But most of all, I have been in WISIS now think, for years. <laughs> I am a huge fan. And I've always been to the hackathon spaces as well. And I think one thing that uh, would be really important is to make it a fluid, open space. Because not only you need to attract women, but you have women of several ages, of several expertises. You have here cybersecurity hackers who are, you, you, you look at them and you would never guess, and they would love to participate in a hackathon. So leaving the, the space open for possible drop-in contributors would be really interesting, and drop-in mentors would be really interesting to, to engage more the community, because the community is a fan of the, of the space in Wizards, and it's quite nice to hear that it will be there again. Thank you. Thank you, Renata. Um, we at this uh, forum and process process are taking uh, the gender issue seriously, and also the hackathon last uh, this year uh, actually had um, uh, quite a big number and very uh, uh, representation was equally footed. And I'll share with you more in particular information on how many participants actually altogether was 79 participants, but how many were uh, women and how many were were men. Uh, definitely, we will be following um, your work, and um, thank you for your contribution. Uh, maybe I can just continue to uh, share with you that um, all are invited, all who are in, interested in the ICT for development are invited to join the hackathon. Uh, the teams will be set up in three to eight. 
uh, uh, per, per team, uh, people per team, and also uh, not only those who are capable of coding, but also those who uh, can share their concepts uh, are free to join. Uh, please um, get us, you know, inform us about your willingness to be a part of the hackathon uh, by, by email or also uh, at the VSIS forum. There will be a link uh, for this. Um, as you all know, VSIS forum is the extra budgetary event. Uh, we would like to thank uh, to all of those who have been supporting the VSIS forum in the past. Uh, and the ongoing call for the new partnerships uh, is also uh, available on the VSIS Forum uh, 2019 website. Uh, it's a contributions to the VSIS Funding Trust. Uh, the pa partnership packages uh, are uh, strengthened this year also by including the strategic, the silver um, strategic partner. And I would like to also uh, announce uh, the so, uh, so far confirmed uh, partners. The gold uh, sponsor is uh, the Saudi Arabia and the contributing partners are coming from uh, Poland, uh, Switzerland, and ICANN. Thank you all again for contributing, and I would like to invite all of you to uh, consider uh, joining uh, this is Forum 2019, uh, exploring the partnership packages, and uh, contribute to this important event and process in general. These are the social uh, media channels uh, that uh, this is, uh, Frosis and VCS Forum uh, are using uh, heavily. Uh, last year, we also included uh, the Instagram channel. Uh, we uh, already have uh, a lot of followers on the Twitter and Facebook. Uh, YouTube uh, is um, also uh, a channel that we use for all our highlights, videos, also interviews that we have with high-level um, speakers, uh, participants, also the, the VCS Prize winners. I invite you to explore all of our social media channels and contribute from your side. Finally, we came to the final, to the last um, uh, slide, uh, inviting you all to uh, again uh, contribute and participate, uh, and to thank you uh, for all your contributions so far. These are the uh, important uh, websites, uh, the VCS online presence, and also you may write to us on the VCS uh, hyphen I, uh, info at ituint. Uh, we will come. We can come back to any of the slides uh, if you have any questions uh, later on. And uh, right now, I would like to introduce um, Denis from UNDESA, who will give also a short presentation related to how are they contributing to the VCS process, uh, especially on the action lines that they are facilitating. Maybe I can uh, do it from here for you. First slide, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Denis. The floor is yours. Thank you, Vladimir, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are very happy uh, to be part of the VCS platform, uh, VCS forum. Uh, I am coming from United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Uh, and we are the co-facilitator for uh, three VCIS action lines. You can see them in the next slide. Uh, so C1, the role of uh, public governance authorities and all stakeholders in the promotion of ICT for development. Uh, C7, e-government and uh, C11, international and regional cooperation. As you know, uh, this IGF forum uh, is an outcome of the VCIS uh, World uh, VCIS Summit. Uh, so we are here uh, because of uh, VCIS and we are very happy also uh, and thankful to UNESCO for hosting us here. Uh, I would like to use my short time uh, to give you an update uh, what we've been doing in the C7 uh, e-government. But before that, uh, these are the work areas uh, in our department. So we work a lot with intergovernmental support. That means uh, we support member states in their uh, discussions in technology for development issues. Uh, together with UNCTAD every year, as you know, there is a resolution in uh, New York in General Assembly on how we can use technology for development. We also do a lot of capacity development. Uh, that's on e-government. Uh, we work with different countries uh, to improve their e-government development. And we also do research and analytical work. And uh, Vladimir, if you can give me the publication next to you. Uh, 
Uh, this is uh, one of our uh, flagship publications. It's called UN eGovernment Survey. Uh, we've been doing this uh, every other year uh, since early 2000s. We also have a DESA booth, uh, I think number 56 in IGF Village. You can go and get uh, copies from there. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, what is UN eGovernment Survey? Uh, it's the only survey uh, that assesses the state of eGovernment development in 193 UN member states. It's used as a benchmark tool uh, to measure eGovernment development, build government's capacity, and uh, provide policy recommendations. Uh, in the last edition, uh, we are looking at sustainable and resilient societies, but in one of the chapters, we also look at uh, emerging technologies, new technologies, such as artificial intelligence, blockchain, and how those are used by governments. So I invite you to look at that uh, later, and it's also available on our website. So uh, let me allow you briefly mention our methodology. Uh, so when we uh, measure uh, e-government development, uh, we end up producing an index called e-government development index. Uh, that's a, a composite index of uh, three sub-indexes. The first one is uh, online service index. So to construct the online service index, we look at national portals and uh, of the 193 uh, UN member states. We have around 160, 170 different features that we check, and you can also those features that we assess in the annex of the survey. So it starts with some basic features, and it goes uh, for uh, advanced features such as tr like making transactions online, etc. And the second component is telecommunication infrastructure index. This data is coming from ITU, mostly is there, cap is there infrastructure available in the country to use the government And the third one is human capital. So is there enough human capital uh, to use the government services? Next, please. Yeah. So uh, these are the s indicators that we use in the telecommunication infrastructure index. It goes with number of internet users, uh, mobile subscribers, etc. All data coming from ITU, and we work closely with uh, ITU's ICT development index. The next set of uh, data is human capital index, uh, and it's coming mostly from UNESCO. So it's a joint uh, collaboration among the agencies you see here. Next. So uh, maybe some, a few uh, highlights from the recent publication. So as you see, uh, we classify countries according to their uh, score. Uh, very high is those countries scored 0 0.75 and above, high uh, zero, between 0 0.50 and 75. As you see, the, the, the top uh, section of the graphs the green and the purple one are increasing uh, over the years since 2003 and uh, blue the lowest is uh, decreasing so we see a, an, an improvement a natural improvement in e-government development uh, around the world next please uh, if you look at regions overall uh, there is no surprise europe is leading and followed by Americas and Asia, uh, and uh, if you look at the subcomponents, I mentioned there are three different uh, components of EGDI, uh, OSI, HCI, TII. Uh, HCI, human capital is highest in all regions, and infrastructure is the lowest contributor in all regions. So that also tells us, confirms us, that we all need to work on uh, connectivity. Next, please. So for example, this is one, in, uh, one finding also with ITU data. If you look at Africa, they spend maybe 14% of their GDP on mobile broadband, but their connection is uh, very low compared to other regions. And if you look at Europe, the, the, the percentage of income we spend on mobile broadband is much less, and it's more available here. Again, 
uh, we all end up with uh, connectivity. Yeah, next. So if I can give you some uh, rankings. Uh, so in the globally, uh, Denmark uh, is uh, number one, followed by Australia and Republic of Korea. UK was number one in 2016. And these countries are pretty much very close to uh, each other. So there are really not much difference among the top 10, top 20, and as you see, mostly European. Next. Uh, so what we found uh, when we checked the online services, three most common online services is utilities payment, uh, submission of income taxes, and registration of new business. And this uh, checking of the portals, we use uh, two researchers speaking the language of that country. Usually these people are students uh, in, in U.S. And then there are additional checks uh, within our department. Next, please. Another trend is countries are uh, increasing their uh, data online. So we, we see the uh, increasing trend in the number of open government data portals worldwide. So from 2014 to 2018. Uh, one uh, sub-index that we use is e-participation index, we call it. So how citizens are involved in uh, participating in policy making. For that, we look at e-information. Uh, information needs to be available, e-consultation and e-decision making, so different tools. Uh, in that one, uh, next please. Yeah. So again, uh, Usual suspects are uh, leading the uh, ranking in that one. Uh, this, time, this year, in the 2018 edition, for the first time, we looked at local uh, service delivery, local online service delivery. We've selected around 40 cities, uh, regionally balanced. Uh, and as much as possible, we try to look at the capital city. If not, uh, we look at the largest city. Uh, sorry, we first tried to look at the largest city in that country, and most of the time that was also the capital city, but it's different uh, for some countries. So we, we checked uh, how uh, municipalities are providing e-government services to citizens. As you know, most of the things that we do with government is happening at the local level. So uh, you can look at Chapter 7 for the details of that study. This was done together with United Nations University. Uh, I can just share with you, because of time, uh, there are some results. So uh, Moscow uh, is the number one in that, according to our findings, followed with uh, Cape Town, Tallinn, and London, uh, and other uh, cities in top. These are the cities that scored 75% or more. Uh, and as I said, we only looked at 40 cities. We are planning to expand this work uh, in the coming years. So if you look at, if you compare cities and uh, countries, again, it's the same classification. If you look at very high, uh, y-axis is the cities. So if you look at very high, uh, so for example, Madrid, Spain is a very high country, and Madrid is also uh, ended up with a very high ranking. Uh, the outlier here is, for example, Mexico City. While Mexico National Portal performs very well in our assessment, the portal of Mexico City is only medium. So we can see that in Mexico, for example, there is a lot of uh, focus on national portal development, but not much in the city level. And same you can say for uh, Berlin or Toronto. On the, sorry, on the other hand, there are also opposites. Uh, so country can be low, but the city, uh, for example, uh, Bangkok, uh, country is high, but the city is medium. Yeah. So it's okay. So I mean, the, what you can take away from my presentation is last slide, please. Uh, so we do this e-government survey every two years, uh, every even years. Uh, European countries are leading, and only four countries from Africa is above the world average. The progress in Asia and America is slow, but at least we can notice that. 
And we see that more and more countries providing online services to the most vulnerable groups. And uh, all 193 UN member states have national portals and 140 of them provide transactional services. So thank you. Thank you, Denise, for this thorough presentation. Uh, we look forward to the report to be presented also uh, at the VESIS Forum 2019, most likely with some updates. Uh, thanks a lot, and um, I would like now to, jo to um, address uh, and uh, allow uh, our VESIS Prize winner in 2019 um, uh, from Internet Society uh, on the, for the project uh, Digital Schools Chapterton. Uh, it was rewarded in the category uh, Regional and International Cooperation. We have with us uh, Ms. Uh, Joyce uh, Donier. Uh, please, Joyce. Your floor is yours. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to, uh, to present uh, or to talk a little bit about the project that we did. Um, at the Internet Society, we promote a globally connected, secure, and trustworthy Internet. And uh, as you all probably, I hope, agree on, the Internet is, uh, is probably one of the most powerful tools for inclusion. Um, and that when we use it for a force of good, it can uh, really enable but also accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, we believe that everybody has a very important role to play uh, in the Internet ecosystem and also in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. And that the only way we will be able to actually achieve those very um, ambitious goals that have been set is through partnership and collaboration. Now, for 15 years now, I think it is, right, Vladimir? Uh, the WISIS Forum uh, has really been a key platform to discuss important uh, sustainable development issues related to ICT. And so for the Internet Society, sustainable development, um, we're an organization that exists now almost 26 years. Um, sustainable development as such is, not, is nothing new. Um, it's something that uh, making sure that the ICT is used for the improvement of, of people's lives is something that is really at the heart of the organization. Um, but we also know that the key of the success to that lies with the people. It lies with the local communities, it lies with the people on the ground. Um, and it lies to the communities that actually use the internet to improve the lives within their own communities. So this is one of the things where we are very proud and very honored to actually uh, have received the WISIS Prize this, uh, this year. Um, the, uh, the prize was given for a project that was done by our uh, chapters, so we have 135 chapters globally. Um, and um, the chapter tone, which is like the marathon or chapter tone, you know, that's, that's how we played with the, with the word, was around digital schools, so internet and education, so digi digital schools. Um, and um, the WISIS prize is what we saw is really giving the opportunity to, um, to people to um, basically an opportunity for two people to showcase the importance of the work that they do at local and at regional level. Um, but again, shining the light on projects that are tackling some of the, of the biggest problems related to ICT. And so what we did is that we invited our global community, our chapters, to participate in this marathon or chapterthon as we called it. Um, and uh, we had 30 chapters that said, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll play the game, we'll play, you know, we'll, we'll run the marathon, we'll do the chapterthon. Uh, and they developed 30 projects in their respective countries. And so the projects were ranging from connecting schools to the internet. Uh, some of them did uh, coding classes for teaching classes for kids, for, children, for girls. Some of them was about training the teachers, understanding that if you don't train the teachers, you actually don't get the results within the education. It's not just the kids that we talk about, it's also the teachers that we need to educate. Um, some of them did projects around uh, raising awareness around safety on the internet, uh, so child safety, online safety. Um, some of them developed an online platform for a school um, and helped to create educational and local content in local language. Um, so they, they became very, uh, very creative, I have to say. Um, so those are some of, some of the examples. You can, uh, you can actually uh, go and visit, uh, I'm sure, the WISIS Prices website to find out more details about uh, the specific projects. So the, the projects actually contributed not only to SDG 4, so education, but uh, also SDG 5, gender inclusion, so really looking at bringing in girls and, and young women um, uh, in, uh, in the use of ICT. But 
to us, the most important piece was also that it, it really showcased the importance of global partnership. And so adding another number, we also had SDG 17. And so looking at collaboration and partnership was really what made the difference because the chapters really talked to each other, they found ideas, they collaborated at local level, but also uh, among themselves. Um, and so what we saw is that it was really, it made a difference. We really saw that for the, the kids in the schools, for the teachers, for the, the parents in some cases, it really made a difference. They're small projects, but if you actually amplify them and manage, them, manage to scale them at regional or even global level in this case, it really makes a difference. Um, and so, um, specifically for, for the WISIS prizes, I have to say that it created an amazing buzz not only around um, the prize that we won. I mean, they were very proud. We were very proud of, of everybody that was involved and that actually did the projects. But it also created a buzz and it, it created a lot of discussion around the importance of the internet and ICTs in general around education and how it can actually support the achievement of certain goals. So we see that a lot of small projects are happening and WISIS prizes and, and a, lot of the, a lot of the community involved in, in WISIS they all come with amazing stories and amazing projects. And having a platform like WISIS and having the recognition then through WISIS prizes to those projects that are done at local level by people who very often do this in a volunteer capacity um, really gives them a global platform to shine, to share, to collaborate and to potentially find new partners as well. Um, and so I, I just, um, one, I want to say thank you because, of course, we're very proud. Um, but, uh, but I also want to uh, applaud the efforts that uh, ITU and WISIS uh, is doing with all the partners involved uh, in providing that opportunity to the people that actually participate. Um, so last words, I would, again, you know, say uh, please, I mean, share your stories, apply for the prizes. It's, uh, it's to the reach of anyone. Any, any small, large, medium NGO that, uh, that has, or organization that has projects deserve to be seen and deserve to be heard and deserve to, be, uh, to have the opportunity to shine and to, uh, to be able to share and, and partner potentially to then scale their projects at, uh, at, a, at a bigger level. So thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, looking forward to, um, to the 2019 version of it. So thank you. Thank you, Joyce, Joy, very much. The best promotion for something you do always comes through uh, the, the, the words of others. Um, 2018 Mrs. Prizes has been a great run for Internet Society and we do hope that uh, you will continue to uh, promote your work uh, through the Mrs. Prizes and perhaps share your um, database of ICT projects. I'm sure you have a lot of them. We would love to have them all. Uh, and this is uh, uh, something in addition that I would like to also um, uh, add to all of you uh, participating here physically or remotely. Um, do uh, use the opportunity. We have on only two more weeks until the deadline. Uh, submission uh, is uh, fairly simple. Uh, it is online on the Visis Prizes website. Um, promote your work, but don't forget to promote the work of others. I'm sure you have your, um, uh, someone from your community on your, net your networks, maybe a neighbor, uh, maybe a, a talented um, uh, kid uh, in school who is doing, already doing an amazing work. Uh, what are the ICT projects? Uh, don't think only about uh, the, the big funded uh, uh, great uh, uh, projects, but also great in a sense of, uh, of, of funds or the outreach, but also think about the small projects. Sometimes people uh, are having a hard time to even connect, but they're doing the best to uh, maybe open a blog or uh, use a Facebook page to uh, inform their uh, neighborhood or their small community about some, uh, some um, um, potential um, uh, challenges or opportunities. And this is already an ICT project. It is using IC, uh, ICT technologies uh, and to, um, to, to help some, some uh, community, small community develop. So again, uh, submit your projects by the 30th of November. Promote this on your websites. Reach out back to us. As I mentioned, we do have the booth here on thir number 37. I can help you um, uh, share more uh, promotional material that you can put on your websites, on your social media channels. Uh, let's uh, make the record and uh, moreover, let's promote uh, those uh, who uh, should be prom promoted. Uh, before um, we conclude, uh, we have four more minutes. I would like to open the floor for uh, questions. Uh, also, if anyone has a question remotely, um, our colleague uh, Ossian will help us with that. Maybe I can ask already some of you, uh, have you been participating and contributing to the VSIS forum and VSIS process in the past? 
Uh, if not, if this is something new, um, please do explore our websites. Uh, we have been building VCS Prize, uh, VCS Forum, VCS Prizes websites for each year uh, individually. Also, you can go and track the historical VCS process uh, in digital form on the VCS.org, where you can see how we started um, in, two, in 1998 with the proposition to have a uh, VCS uh, summit uh, established, and then 2003 and 5, later on 2009, and so on. Although this meeting, uh, the focus is on the 2019. Uh, by exploring the past, you will see uh, how, what, what was the, um, the experience we had so far uh, and how mm -hmm. others contributed and how you can also, fo also follow or maybe even make innovations. As I mentioned, we are open to your suggestions. This is the open consultation process um, meeting uh, and it is focused and dedicated on you telling us what you think the next forum uh, and other business, process, uh, business related processes should be alike. Uh, and again, I would like to um, uh, open the slide on the open calls. Please uh, uh, make sure that uh, you do follow the deadlines. It is very important that uh, we reach, uh, you reach out to us prior to these deadlines. And before closing, maybe uh, some from the panelists would like to uh, share uh, final remarks. Sasha? What an honor to close this session. Uh, I would like on behalf of uh, all of the UN agencies that are involved, uh, both present today, uh, so ITU and, and UNDESA, but also uh, UNCTAD and UNDP who are not with us today, uh, reiterate um, the uh, commitment that the UN has uh, as it concerns mainstreaming ICTs and sustainable development, but also to uh, bridging uh, the divides that exist, let's say, and uh, working both with the public and private sector to make uh, our commitments in the framework of the WISIS follow-up a reality and a success. So we look forward to welcoming you in the spring uh, to Geneva, where it will be a little bit warmer than it is now. So I'm sure there'll be a lot more people that will be happy to participate. Um, uh, to continue this discussion and would also like to reiterate uh, that uh, anybody who's interested both in the hackathon and in um, uh, contributing with their ideas uh, and proposals are most welcome. The uh, platform that exists, uh, which is the WISIS Forum, is intended, as Vladimir rightly underlined, uh, a crowdsourcing uh, event. And uh, what we need from civil society and from the WISIS community is not only your ideas, but also innovation to make sure that the UN, with our civil society partners and private sector partners, continue to put ICTs at the heart of sustainable development and development at large. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you to the UN agencies for the example of delivering as one at the highest level as it concerns policies and programs. And we look forward to welcoming you in Geneva in the spring. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you all for joining this meeting. Uh, we came to the closing. Uh, again, uh, come back to us by mail. Uh, go through the websites or come physically at uh, UNESCO, UNDESA, or ITU uh, exhibition booth uh, during the IGF. Thanks again. And thank uh, Ocean for your uh, help.